Kiwi kids are about to get their chance at a golfing craze that's introduced the sport to youngsters around the globe. Snag Golf is the brainchild of American Terry Anton, who set out with the goal of making golf child's play. In 1989, um, the, the National Golf Foundation of the United States did a survey and they found out that we were not retaining golfers in the game. And, and part of that was about every 90 days we'd have new, new golfers coming to the game, but we'd have an equal amount leaving the game. So we wanted to do, accomplish two goals create the best entry level instructional program and also then to modify the game a little bit so that people that couldn't afford to go to a course could then learn and play the game in their own backyard, city parks, that sort of thing. As well as a specialized program, snag golf is unique in the kit that is used. How did you decide on the equipment then, the equipment that we're holding here? How did you decide on this? Well, what we looked at was that most traditional golf equipment for new learners was really inappropriate. So what we looked at is they need bigger club heads, bigger balls, a better and more surface area to be able to miss the ball. We took a cue from what a man named Jim Baugh did by inventing the Prince tennis racket. So we found that tennis really did more for, for itself by creating a bigger tennis racket, making it easier for people to play. I noticed we've only got two clubs. Do you only need two clubs? We think so. We, if you break down the game of golf, you've got the striking component and then you've got the putting component. So um, in my early career, I was at the genesis of our U.S. Senior Tour, what they call the Legends of Golf. And so I got to play with the Jimmy Demerits and the, and the Tommy Bolts and, and the Jackie Burks and all these guys, and I asked them how they started golf. And each one said they basically started with one club, and what they learned to do was articulate their hands and become great hands players. I think that's been lost in the game because of technology, and with what we do, we're trying to bring that back. Snag golf programs are already underway in four Auckland schools and because an 18-hole course isn't required, it can be played indoors, at rest homes or as part of corporate functions. We can set up a course pretty much anywhere. So whatever open space, whether it's a soccer field, a park, we will look and say an average par 3 is probably 20 to 35 yards, a par 4 up to 50 yards and a par 5, 80, 90 yards. Now what about these balls? Because they, they look like tennis balls. Well, what we found, especially with new learners, is because of the density of a golf ball, they needed something to create more compression. So this type of ball was a, was a better ball. And if we were going to play on surfaces like uh, parks or whatever that weren't as well manicured as a golf course, we had to create almost like a beach ball effect so the ball would roll on top, just like it would on a putting green. But the ball weighs exactly the same as a golf ball. We play actually with a mat and a tee so we don't create any agronomic damage like you would taking divots in a park, so we don't do anything, anything like that. But our end target was we don't have to dig any holes either. So now when the ball sticks to this target, it's the same thing as holing out in golf. Snag Golf has already got approval from the New Zealand PGA and New Zealand Golf, who recognise its potential in uncovering the next Michael Campbell or Lydia Ko. I think what we'd like to do is create, help create a feeder system through the schools, the parks and everything else so that as people begin to advance in golf in, in New Zealand that you start to create a wider base of potential for great players. And if it can make me play like a US Open champion, then it's got to be good. Oh, that is a great shot. Yeah, it would have been. Perfect.